Greetings, salutations, respect, and love. I am Scott. You are in the Prague Corner, and today is part one of your obscure album picks. I told you guys to name one obscure album that you guys are obsessed with, and uh, I told you I would collate them and rank them and give you guys credit for your nominations. And today is part one of an ongoing series. We are going to do, I might just do this like once a week because honestly, the quality of the records that you guys have suggested to me demands that I spend a little more time with these records than I thought. And secondly... Out of the 145 suggestions, I swear I only know like 35 or 40 of these as I go through them. So I do have to spend a little bit of time with these albums. But without much further ado, let's start this thing off at number 145. We are going with Michael Rammel and uh, Extravaganza. This came to me from uh, Jor Mung Muggander. <laughs> Uh, this guy is a Swedish singer-songwriter. This album came out in 1977. It's got that cool, warm 70s feel to it. I don't know how much prog I was actually hearing in his music. Pretty cool stuff, though. At number 144, I'm going with Time Machine Act 2 Galileo. This is a prog metal band that certainly takes some cues from Dream Theater. They sound all right, but this isn't really the kind of music that I gravitate towards most of the time. It's all right. At number 143, uh, this comes courtesy of eBay Hi-Fi, Les Variations, Café de Paris. This is a French Moroccan band. They sound like straight up uh, rock and roll to me. The album came out in 1975. I like it. It sounds really good, but I'm not Convinced it's really that proggy, actually. At number 142, and this one came to me from Thorsten Gross, it's Devil Doll and the Girl That Was Death from 1989. This is their second full length, their first that actually had uh, widespread distribution. This is the band from uh, Slovenia, led by the mysterious Mr. Doctor. Uh, it's crazy, it's symphonic, it's, it's pretty cool stuff, I really love it like it at number 141 this is this is a weird one coming to me from Burt Carison it's a uh, Joachim Skogsberg and uh, Jola Rota I don't know if you guys ever saw that Rob Zombie movie the Lords of Salem where they put this record on and if you listen to it you get possessed by the devil and everything that's what this music sounds like there's chanting and mumbling and humming and recitations. It's just bizarre, man. I, I don't understand it at all. <laughs> I'm just going to say that right off the bat. At number 140, BB Chronicles has nominated Seventh Wave, Things to Come. This was a two-piece band out of the UK. Apparently, they hated each other so much that they broke up before this album came out, and then they dropped this album, then they broke up again, then they put out a second album, then they broke up again because they just couldn't stand each other. But the album is actually really good at number 139. Runcible Moon wants me to uh, talk about Eskimo and the album is The Further Adventures of Der Shrimpkin. I've been aware of Eskimo for a while now being a Residence fan. Um, I figured there was some connection there that it was, uh, uh, you know, they were alluding to the Residence in the name of the band and after listening to this album, they, they most certainly are alluding to the Residence but there's also some Zappa and Beefheart and some other stuff thrown in there. It's really avant-garde. It's, you know, let's be honest. Most of it just went straight over my head. At number 138, let's go to the mad Belgian violinist who moved to the UK and started a band called Esperanto. This is from Jeff Adolph. We're going to go with their third album, Last Tango. Um, this is a cool band. This album is bizarre because it starts with a cover of Eleanor Rigby. Yeah, it's cool, though. I like it. At number 137, <coughs> Invisible El Jardín de los Presentes. This came from Willati. Uh, Invisible is a cool band. I've been hearing about them for a while. I had never checked them out. Went on to YouTube and, you know, found that album. And, wow, it's really great. Thanks a lot for that suggestion. Willati, very nice. At 136, the oldest album. 
on this list. Well, somebody recommended Stravinsky Rites of Spring, so that, I guess, would have been the oldest entry on here, but uh, we're talking about prog rock. And Stravinsky's not prog rock. I'm sorry, guys. But at number 136 from 1968, the debut album from Silver Apples. And this came from my good friend, uh, Hartlord Taylor. Uh, what a great call. Uh, you know, everybody talks about suicide. You know, everybody talks about the pioneers of the electronic scene. Why do they never talk about Silver Apples? Man, good, good question. At number 135, this comes to me from Steve. And this is Richard Wright's second and final solo album, Broken China. Um, I actually had nominations for both of uh, Richard Wright's albums. And that's really good to see. They're both really good. I do prefer the first one a little bit more. I like the production. But this is a great record, too. Um... Fantastic stuff. At 134, we're going to Australia with Kyrie Eliaison. Uh, this comes from Prague Fan. And no, we're not talking about their first album. I didn't know they had a second album. It's called Blind Window Suite. And I guess it's their earlier material that they uh, went back and uh, remastered and brought back. Uh, the release date on that is 1994. But uh, I'm pretty sure those songs were probably recorded like 74, 75. And that... Uh, area. The production's not great, but the songs are good. I do like it. We're staying in Australia for number 133. Thank you, Brad McAvoy. I know Ben Craven. I like his music. I did not know he put out a new album this year, so this is the newest album on this list from 2022. It's called Monsters of the Id. It's got uh, Roger Dean doing the album cover, and it's a 20-minute song on side one and a 20-minute song on side two. It's great. I am going to have to spend just a little bit more time with Ben Craven because I'm really thinking there's some stuff in there uh, that I'm going to really like a whole lot. At number 132, we're going to Journey's first album from 1975. Thank you, Garrett Gebhardt, for that. You know, people think about Journey. They think about Don't Stop Believing and all that kind of radio stuff. But th what they forget is the first three albums before Steve Perry joined the band. They were definitely a jazz rock band. They were definitely a prog band. Uh, yeah, the fantastic record. I agree with you on that. At number 131 from Tony AMO. This is one I hadn't heard before. Uh, Abadul Nosotros. Uh, Spanish band. Uh, the album came out in 1979, so it's right at that tail end of the Prague era. Um, it's kind of accessible Prague as 1979, the Prague was getting a little watered down, and you do feel a little bit of that on this album, but they were a little bit behind the times and that it's got the spirit of early 70s baked right in it. It's a great album. I really enjoyed it. At number 130, Charles Bannister wanted me to rank Shakti with uh, John McLaughlin, but the album that he mentioned, I have no idea what he's talking about. I really don't. Uh, he mentioned an album called The Art of Listening. I don't know that album. And I went on you know, Google and tried to find I could not. So I am going to substitute it with the third album from Shakti and John McLaughlin called uh, Natural Elements. It's the only one I know. <laughs> So I could I could cheat a little bit and have one less album to listen to. Sorry about that, Charles. Uh, 129. This is one that uh, I knew nothing about. The band is called Floating State. Uh, the album is 13 Tolls at Noon. And this comes from uh, Yannick Kraska. Why did I not know anything about these guys? This is a fantastic record. And right in the middle of it, there's a 44-minute long song. Yeah, that's what I want to hear. It's really good stuff. Uh, at number 128, we're going to be talking about some kraut rock with Kupla Prague. And the album is Death is a Great Gambler. This came out in 1971 or 1972, depending on who you listen to. Look. I don't know a lot about kraut rock. I'm trying to correct that. I'm listening to a lot more of it these days. Uh, you know, 
it's just, there's just so much out there to listen to. So that's why I'm doing this. It's forcing me to listen to some stuff that maybe I would not have. And this couple of Prague is really cool. I mean, I really dig it. Um, yeah, it's kraut rock, but it's got some psychedelic elements to it. Um, it's good. It's got a really good sound. I'm digging it. At number 127, we're going with Amarok and uh, Quintad Harkin from Dave Last. This is not the Polish Amarok. This is the Spanish Amarok, who I had never listened to. I know all about the Polish Amarok and love them. Uh, so this was a new experience for me. This album came out in 2004, and uh, it's actually really good. So thank you so much, Dave Last, Dav Last, however you say it. Number 126. Oh, this is a cool one. Check out this album cover. This is uh, June Tagawa Band and Tagawa Fiction uh, from 2004. Japanese singer, Japanese band. I know nothing about these guys. I know nothing about her. I'd never even heard of her before. This music's crazy. It's busy. It is just so information dense uh, that you could like almost feel your brain exploding listening to it. I'm digging it, and I am going to be doing a deep dive on her music. I'm really liking what I'm hearing. Thank you very much for that. Not Dead Luna. Good job. At number 125, we're going back to Germany with some kraut rock, and it's between and The Waters Open from 1973. This came from uh, Fire Moon 42. Another great, great record. Again, more maybe more on the accessible end of kraut rock, but I'm hearing Middle Eastern influences. I'm hearing all kinds of stuff that I didn't expect to hear in a kraut rock record. Fantastic. I'm just, I'm really liking what I'm hearing there. At number 124, this was a bizarre one. I didn't expect to see this. John Frugiante, Sphere in the Heart of Silence. This was an album that uh, the Red Hot Chili Peppers guitarist did with his replacement in the Red Hot Chili Peppers, uh, Josh Klinghoffer, and uh, the two of them put uh, this album together. And it's really great. I don't know how prog it really is, but I don't really care because I really liked it. I'd never heard it before, uh, but it's fantastic. Apparently, John's got a whole bunch of solo albums out. I did not know that. Um, and if they're anything like this, they're definitely worth investigating. At number 123, we are going with the Norwegian Turge Ripdale. This came from Monsieur Le High. And the album is Whenever I Seem to Be Far Away from 1974. Uh, very jazzy, kind of jazz fusion, atmospheric. This is a guy I knew about but never actually listened to. So thank you so much for making me do that. I liked it quite a bit. At number 122, we're going with the debut album from Ragnarok. And no, we're not talking about the heavy metal band. We're talking about the Swedish prog band. The debut came out in 1976, and it's a classic. It's a great, great album. Uh, thank you so much, Loseth, for that one. I totally agree. I love Scando Prague. 70s Swedish Prague is just so great. There's just such a certain feel uh, that nobody else captured. I just, yeah, I love it. I love it. And finally, we're closing out today's episode with number 121, and we're going to Sarajevo. Yugoslavia in 1978, a band named Indexy released their second album. Might have been their third album. I don't know. It's called Modra Rejeka, and this came from Runei. Thank you so much for that suggestion. Wow, what a record this is. I had no idea. Again, never heard of them. Um, but they bring all the different elements of British progressive rock, but you also hear continental stuff. You do hear German influences, Italian influences. What a great record this was. I was so happy with that suggestion. I'm telling you, these first 25, so much greatness. Uh, you guys are just killing it. You guys are killing it. I can't wait to do the, the next batch. I'll probably do another 25 next week. But this has just been incredible. I'm telling you, not there's not one bad record out of this bunch. There's not one bad record out of the entire 145 that you guys suggested. So I'm really excited to to keep this thing going and uh, you know turn you guys on to some new prog that might be old, but it's new to you and it's 
most of the stuff's been new to me too. So we're going through this together. We're learning together. We're growing and sharing. Isn't that what community's all about, people? Anyway, um, I'm starting up some uh, membership thing here. Uh, it's going to be like $4.99 a month to join the connoisseur level. And you guys tell me uh, what you think about that, if it's worth doing. And if so, um, what would make it worthwhile, right? What, what do you need from me to make that worthwhile? Because I'm a poor man. And let's face it, I'm looking to make some money. That's it. That's all it is. But no, really, seriously, um, thank you guys so much. Uh, we're having a lot of fun with this series. It's going to be going on for a while, so bear with me. But it's all your fault for all these great suggestions. If you would have been nominating a bunch of crap, I could have done this in a you know couple of hours. But as it stands, most of these records are just incredibly good, and I just want to spend a lot of time with them. So that's going to delay me rolling out episodes two, three, and four, etc. Whatever. Anyway, I love you guys. Have a great day, and I will see you freaks soon.